Hey, what's up guys? Codeforge here. Welcome in the next video. Today we'll learn about single table inheritance strategy. Of course, we will use Spring Boot together with the JPA and Hibernate. On the screen you can see our starting project. All the values are pretty much default. I have changed the group, artifact and name. And on the right side we can see our dependencies which are also pretty much standard. So we have H2 in memory database, Spring Web and also Spring Data JPA. We can generate the project and start coding. So let's go. Okay, here we are in the first place. We would like to change the properties. So we go to the project, we go to the source, main. And over here in the resources we have the application properties file. Over here I will paste the properties which we are using across the JPA series. And if you don't know what's going on over here, you can check out my video which is dedicated to H2 configuration. We are ready to create our single table inheritance and we'll start with creating packages. So we go to the Java and here in the main package we want to create our packages and it will be model and the second one will be repository which we'll use later so we say a repository we'll have three classes and the first one will be art piece so let's say it will be art piece over here also we'll have another one which will be called painting and the last one will be called sculpture And we would like to start with the art piece class. So in the first place, we want to annotate it with the entity annotation. After that, we can specify the inheritance strategy by using inheritance annotation. And between parentheses, we can specify strategy. And in this video, we'll take care of the inheritance type single table. And by using this strategy, we are telling Hibernate that we want to store all entities in the same table. And because of that, we will have one additional column, which is called discriminator column. Thanks to that, we will be able to distinguish our entities from each other. And in our case, this column will have value of painting or sculpture. Okay, enough talking, let's define our discriminator column and to do it we want to use discriminator column annotation and now we can specify the name of this column and we'll say that it is art piece type and we'll also specify the type so we want to say discriminator type and we'll set it to string. You can also pick integer and char, but I think the string will be the best. That looks good. We also want to mark our class as abstract because we don't want to create instances of the art piece class. And now we want to define the properties and associated mappings, which will be common for each of our subclasses. So each art piece will have primary key. So we want to use id annotation together with the generated value and strategy set to auto. And we want to put it on the private long id field. Each art piece will also have author, so we want to say private string author. This looks good. We will also generate constructors, so we will generate a default one which is empty and the second one which we will generate for the author because id is auto generated. Now let's take care of the sculpture entity. So we go over here and first thing we want to do is to annotate it with the entity annotation. We will also annotate this class with the discriminator value and we'll set it to sculpture. Thanks to that annotation, each time will persist the sculpture entity, the discriminator column value will be set to sculpture. 
And later on we'll do exactly the same for the painting. We can move on and now we also want to make our sculpture class to extend art piece. So we want to say extends art piece. Thanks to that our sculpture class will inherit all of the properties and mapping information from the art piece class. Now we want to add few sculpture specific properties and to do that we will create a new enum. So we want to right click on the model package, select new java class and we want to change it to the enum. And now we want to call it material. And let's say we'll have three types of materials for our sculptures and it will be wood and it will be rock and the last one it will be metal. That looks good. So we can go back to the sculpture class and over here we can create a new property and we'll say private. It will be the type of our new enum which is material and the property will be called material. We also want to annotate this property with the enumerated annotation like this and we'll specify the value set to enum type string. So our material will be stored as the string so it will take value of wood, rock or the metal. We'll have one more property over here and it will be weight. So we want to say private double weight. Last thing we have to do is to generate the constructor. So let's generate first the default one. So it's the empty constructor and also let's generate the constructor for our super class and for our properties like this. We can switch to the painting entity and over here we want to annotate it with the entity annotation and also we want to use the discriminator value annotation and set the value to painting like this. Like in the case of sculpture we would like to say extends art piece. And now we will add few painting specific properties and for that we will create a new enum. So we will say new java class enum and this time we will call it painting technique. Like this. We will have three different painting techniques and the first one will be acrylic. After this one we will have watercolor and the last one will be oil and now we can use it in our entity so we go over here and we can say private painting technique with the same name and we'll also annotate it with the enumerated annotation and the value will be set to string We will have two additional properties and it will be height and width. So we'll say private double width and the second one it will be private double height. Last thing we have to do over here is to generate the constructor. So we go over here and the first one will be the default and the second one will be for our super class and for our properties. So it will look like this. And now we can start our application to check out if the database structure will look like we are expecting. So we go to the Maven plugins Spring Boot Run. And after a few seconds it should be up. We can open the web console, it's over here on the local host port 8080 h2. We can connect using the default user. And over here you can see that we have only one table that is called art piece. And if we select the data from here, we can see that we have the columns from the super class, which is called art piece in our case. And it is the ID and the author. 
We also have the sculpture specific columns, which is the material and weight. And also we have the columns from the painting entity and it is height, painting technique and width. Over here we can also find our extra column which is the discriminator column and in our case it is called art piece type and it will store the information about the type of object that has been persisted and you can also see that our entire inheritance hierarchy is stored in one single table called art piece. But it will be of course easier to see it when we will populate our table with data. So let's close it and let's stop the application for now. To persist the data we will need repositories so let's create them. We have already created the package over here so we want to say new Java class and in this case it will be interface and the first repository it will be artpiece repository and we'll have one more for the sculpture repository and the last one will be for the painting so i want to say java class repository like this let's start with the art piece repository and in the first place we want to annotate it with the no repository bin annotation thanks to that annotation spring will not pick up this repository so it will be not possible to create an instance of it we want to make this art piece repository extend the crude repository so we want to say extends crude repository and it is generic type and we want to create this crude repository for the super class and in our case it is art piece and each of our entity is inheriting the id from the art piece and it is the type of long so we want to say long over here it is everything what we have to do over here now we can jump to the sculpture repository and we will annotate it with the repository annotation and all you have to do is to say extends and we want to extend the art piece repository we don't have to extend the crud repository because we are already doing it in the art piece repository and we also want to do the same for the painting repository so we want to say repository over here and we want to say extends art piece repository okay that looks good so we can move to the main class and over here we'll perform some tests so first of all we want to access the context of our application so we'll say configurable application context with the same name and over here we'll store the result of the run method and now we want to retrieve our bins so we will say art piece repository and the first will be painting repository so we'll say it like this and now using the configurable application context we can say get pin and retrieve the painting repository dot class we'll do the same for the sculpture repository so again we want to say art piece repository but this time for yabo will be called sculpture repository and using the context we can retrieve the bin and it will be sculpture repository dot class so now we are ready to create our objects we go over here and we'll use the art piece type thanks to our inheritance and we'll say sculpture in the first place and now we can use the constructor from the sculpture which we have created so we want to say new sculpture and now we have to provide the author so it will be john doe now we have to specify the materials so let's say it will be material.wood it is the enum which we have created and now the weight so it will be let's say 200.2 
and you can see that we have used this art piece as the type of our variable and this is because the sculpture is inheriting from the art piece same story here we are able to retrieve the painting repository pin and assign it to the art piece repository type and this is because our painting repository from here is extending the art piece repository so yeah this is called polymorphism and we want to do the same for the painting so again we can use art piece type since our painting is inheriting from the art piece and the variable name will be painting and now we can use our constructor so we say new painting and now we have to pass the author so it will be term smith and now the painting techniques so we will say painting technique dot oil and now the width so it will be 25.5 and also height so it will be 44.9 and now we can persist them so we want to say sculpture repository dot save and it will be sculpture and also we can say painting repository dot save and we can pass our painting we can start our application to test it out so we say spring boot run and after a few seconds we'll open the web console of the h2 database okay it's here we can log in and we can select the data from the art piece table and yeah over here the first thing that we can see is this art piece type column which is our discriminator column and for our sculptures in the database it will have the value of sculpture and for the paintings it will have the value of painting next thing we can observe is that for the painting entry we have null values for the material and the weight and this is because those two columns those two properties are sculpture specific not the painting specific properties same goes for the sculpture entry where height painting technique and width are specific for the painting only and for the sculpture it is null so yeah let's try also to delete something so we can close it and stop the application we'll add one more extra line at the bottom so we'll say sculpture repository and we'll delete our sculpture so we want to pass the sculpture object let's rerun our application so we go to the maven and we start it with the spring boot run let's wait a few seconds and we can see it in the console that one of the art pieces has been deleted and let's check out the web console here it is and we can connect and we can select the data from our art piece table and we can see that only painting left in our table so our sculpture has been successfully deleted so this is how you want to create a single table inheritance using jpa and hibernate i hope you like it if you do remember about liking the video and subscribing to the channel you can also leave a comment if you like this single table approach or not and yeah, this is all. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.